This episode of Unqualified is brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. On the drive to and from my parents' house in Washington State, we almost always stop at two particular McDonald's, one in Salem, Oregon, and another in Eureka, California. At the moment, we are in the parking lot of the Salem location, and I just finished a Big Mac and fries. Even though we are just passing through, I appreciate the familiarity and feeling of community. The other day, I was looking through my mother-in-law's photo album and came across a photo where she and her friends are standing in front of a McDonald's wearing their cheerleading uniforms. I usually call my mother-in-law New Mom, but her name is Marsha. Under the photo, Marsha had written a note and I clocked her in to letting me read it here. San Bernardino, California. I have so many memories of this McDonald's over the years. My father took me there on what I think was opening day. What a thrill it was as a young girl to order a chocolate shake, hamburger, and french fries. Then there was the time when my cousin Hinda and I were given a tour and allowed to take dill pickles by the cupful out of a huge barrel. We must have eaten a hundred pickles each. Everyone in my family knows the story of how I accidentally missed the ketchup container and dipped a fry into my milkshake. Now when I dip fries in my shake, it's on purpose. I remember when I was 12 years old, my mother and my cousin Noel Novak, Larry's brother, picked me up from dance class and we went for dinner to celebrate Noel's graduation from high school. Years later, when I was in high school, we would go to McDonald's every Friday night after the football game. I wish you could see this photo. Marcia couldn't remember if they won the game that night, but everyone is smiling as if they did. Wherever your local McDonald's is, there's nothing better than that wonderful feeling of community. Well, maybe that feeling is tied with eating a Big Mac. McDonald's, I'm loving it. much difference between an actor and a politician i mean at least in oh, terms of like playing the character of like, oh i think the best politicians well i think there are politicians who are much better actors than any actor <laughs> yeah 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 who would you say is a politician that's a, just a terrific actor bill clinton bill yeah clinton. yeah i think he's the best okay yeah makes sense yeah, yeah. not saying that they're <laughs> insincere <laughs> right but um you know it's all the small talk, the small talk alone. I think they should get an acting award. Yeah. And also there has to be that inherent desire. And I don't know how much you have of this, Lisa, but you know, that desire to be liked Mm -hmm. and to sort of give up any, any core principle that you may have or any sense of morality <laughs> in order to be liked by a huge population. <laughs> no, or just the unwillingness to divulge any personal opinions that might not be okay with other people. Yeah. 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 It is. It's playing the character. How can you not like for, and you, we see it, it's like from state to state to state. Mm-hmm. Now. It's like what character are you going to be now? But they do. They, they do. They, they get a little more Southern. Uh-huh. Right? They start to, I know what you're going through. Yeah. yeah. You're from Connecticut. How'd that happen? Yeah. Um, all right. Well, listen, tonight on this rainy evening in Los Angeles, I am so happy to welcome Lisa and Jessica um, to my podcast that Sim and I started Wait, wait what are their last names? Uh, Lisa Kudrow and, oh my God, Jessica Cabot. <laughs> <laughs> That's hey, right. look at that. Look at that. Look at what I did. <laughs> you Just did it Cabot. right. And Sim reminded me like four times. Look, here's my information sheet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> very extensive In my information defense, sheet. I'm not very I smart. Wrote two lines. <laughs> and I also have to store a lot of lines in my brain. Yeah, you do. I mean, you know the multi cam. I, I, we're on our third season of Mom. Yeah. And I'm still, I, 
I feel like I have so much to learn. You do. Oh, no. I meant lines. You do. Oh, yes. I was like, yeah. oh, you do. I've seen the show. <laughs> no, you do have a lot of lines. You're I half do, the show. I, I was a sixth. But, you know, and I want to maybe talk to you at length that maybe we can talk about now or later or whatever. But um, there's been some, I've had some revelations about this format with the multicam world that, and the best way I can explain I'm, what the multicam world is to everyone first. Well, what does multicam mean exactly? So it means, um, you know, my show mom and Lisa's um, sort of sort of well known show, Friends, um, <laughs> was it's filmed in front of a live audience with four to five cameras. So and you um, you'll on our show sometimes we'll do a, a five page scene. Um, it's it's a little more theatrical and. There is a feeling, and it's very, very uh, precise, which is something that's really surprised me, too. Um, Not just in terms of blocking, but sort of the puzzle that's unraveled as the week goes on. Like, oh, okay, I need to work, I need to start learning how to work with this prop. Mm -hmm. Or like, why the hell are they having me cross to that fridge just because they want movement? Don't, shouldn't I be doing something for a reason? Like, that that was always the hardest part for me, motivating. Mm -hmm. Oh, we need someone to get up and go (laughs) do something. (laughs) (laughs) Like, well, Joey's not in the scene, so there's (laughs) no one's going to get some food. And Allison, Jenny, my beloved co-star, I'm crazy about her. She just loves to sit down. So she'll be like, (laughs) when we start blocking a scene early on in the week, she will establish herself with a couch. So then I'm left like, running around like buzzing around the mail <laughs> and like whatever cleaning the thing um but i also the best way i i feel like i can describe it in some ways is that it's it's such a deceptively difficult format and it's also it's in a weird way there's no place to hide and i don't know if you ever felt that way like there's no and it's not just because you're shooting in front of a live audience it's because partly it's because you are sort of required to commit to a joke fully, mm-hmm. even if you're not crazy about it mm-hmm. sometimes, even though I think we have brilliant writing or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, you do. Yeah. You can't half ass it at right. all. And, um, and also just sort of the, you really, it, it's like a, it's more, athletic not just in terms of like the physicality stuff of literally like running around all day long but also because it's like you are playing catch with every all of your castmates in the single camera world you don't necessarily i love doing that i love that about about the job that it that it feels like we're a baseball team and now Mm -hmm. someone is up to bat and but it is it has to be a true um, truly cooperative experience. Mm-hmm. Did you do you think? I mean, you you would know a lot more about this than I do. But did you find that? Yeah, I definitely did, and especially the line thing because for some reason the audience seems to think that you came up with everything you're saying. <laughs> they hold. It feels like they're holding you completely responsible for you know like why you, you thought that was a good joke. Like I the line. <laughs> in the script. But the writers, you know, if it doesn't work, they rewrite it. So, you know, you can start to just settle into, you know, if even if it's not your sense of humor, you know, but it works for the show and the mm-hmm. audience still likes it, or it doesn't even work for the show, and then they'll rewrite it. Yeah, no, and like I said, we're, we're really lucky that we have brilliant writers, and, um, and I, I love our show, but it is... I just have a whole, I feel embarrassed that I didn't have the amount of respect for people who are excel in this format before. It's, yeah, it's definitely a different, it's fu- It's a different acting energy, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's not stage, mm-hmm. you know, you really are. I mean, I don't know. I don't, you, there are, you know, a couple hundred, 400 people in the audience, but this is something that's going to be broadcast on television, so it really isn't meant for an audience. Um, and yet, there, you have to like go somewhere in between with the mm-hmm. performance energy level, right? Yeah. yeah, people would be, you know, guest stars on our show, but you were fine. I mean, you oh god, seemed that's perfectly really sweet. fine. I all I you remember didn't seem struggling or troubled or nervous, and you were fantastic. 
Uh, for our listeners out there, I did I, like three uh, three episodes of that's it three or four of that episodes final during, season right uh, the final season yeah. and um, all I remember is just terror just, oh no like, really IBS just but <laughs> I was so honored to be a part I mean it was like I mean it was just so huge to be yeah. a part of the you I mean. You know, to, well, we were so distracted too. We probably well, there was a lot of uh, emotions <laughs> happening, yeah. and so <laughs> I, um, I, I feel like there was a time, and I don't know if my memory is fully accurate on this, but I think there was a time, like second to last episode, there was a group hug, and I was kind of, sort of, I was sort of standing nearby, and I think David sort of kind of brought me in, but I was like. No, I can't. I can't. I can't be a part of the bathroom. <laughs> like, wait, no, I can't. No, I shouldn't. No, too late. Okay, well, okay. I just <laughs> quick pat on the back and then I'll, I'll get out of here. Oh. <laughs> but no, it was what really a nightmare. No, no, no. It was thrilling, and everyone was so lovely to me. But it, but it because you know it was, um, it was had obviously made such a cultural impact. It had you know it was, I was living. It was the most surreal experience. Yeah, it must have been. It must have been so weird. I just remember thinking, man, she's really good. Oh, my God. She's really good. Thanks for saying that. Yeah. I don't don't remember feeling that part, but um, I did (laughs) give birth to twins that Mm -hmm. I didn't know about. (laughs) Well, your character gave birth to, you were a surrogate, right? That was your character. I wasn't a surrogate. I was a I was the birth, uh, mom. the birth, the adoptive. I was giving my baby up for adoption. Oh, that's right. Okay. To Monica and Chandler, and um, and on the, as I'm giving birth, um, we realize that there's twins. <laughs> I know. How did that happen? I went, I don't remember. The joke was something like I say something like, "Well, the doctor said there were two heartbeats, but I just thought he meant one was me." Or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> But Monica and Shannon got twins, which I actually wouldn't. I'm not sure I would uh, yeah. wish on. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Exactly. It's supposed so, to be great. Well, and it is great for those of you. But hopefully you're too twins. young and you don't have twins. This episode of Unqualified is brought to you in part by State Farm. And in honor of their surprisingly great auto insurance rates, I'm going to tell you about a particularly surprising day on set. It takes me a long time to read a script. For almost every line of dialogue, I will stop to figure out why my character would say it, how it fits in the conversation, and how it's going to come out of my mouth. Between the lines, there are larger chunks of text which describe everything else happening in the scene. Maybe what a room looks like, what characters are wearing, and what they're doing. As I often underestimate how long everything in my life takes, I know I can make up some time by reading those larger chunks a little faster. I got the script for Overboard about six months before we started production. I read it in my warm living room, wearing comfortably warm clothes, sipping from a warm mug of tea. Somehow, it never occurred to me that when you jump off a boat in the middle of the ocean, the water is surprisingly cold. And it doesn't get any warmer on take two. Here at Unqualified, we love State Farm because they provide coverage that meets your needs at a surprisingly great rate. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or go to statefarm.com for a quote today. This episode of Unqualified is brought to you in part by Warby Parker. Warby Parker was founded with a rebellious spirit and the lofty goal of creating boutique quality eyewear at a revolutionary price point. Sunglasses, with or without a prescription, start at $95 and, just like eyeglasses, are available through their home try-on program. You just choose five pairs and see which ones you like. I was surprised by how quickly they arrived, which presented me with the immediate problem of deciding which ones to keep. I loved all of them, so you can guess what happened. And not only can you feel good about how cool you look, you can also feel good knowing that for every pair of glasses sold, Warby Parker distributes a pair of glasses to someone in need through partnerships with nonprofits like Vision Spring. 
Offering eyeglasses, sunglasses, contact lenses, and eye exams, Warby Parker is committed to providing exceptional vision care online and in stores. So put your FSA or HSA dollars to good use on Warby Parker prescription glasses, prescription sunglasses, contact lenses, and eye exams. Try Warby Parker's free home try-on program. Order five pairs of glasses to try at home for free for five days. There's no obligation to buy. Ships free and includes a prepaid return shipping label. Try five pairs of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com slash unqualified. That's W-A-R-B-Y-P-A-R-K-E-R dot com slash unqualified. Um, we have a new segment that we're doing um, for you. Oh, that Sim came up with. Thanks, normally, Sim. normally we have um, we do a segment called Rapid Fire, uh-huh. where we ask our, our our guests obviously series mm-hmm. of questions. Rapid Fire, right. and but you know I'm slow, so it's been modified. <laughs> it's really <laughs> funny you say that because Sim <laughs> came up with the not so rapid fire segment. Oh, good, with Lisa. <laughs> yeah, that's really yeah. clever writing. <laughs> not so rapid fire. Mm-hmm. That's good. It's not because I I. Obviously, I didn't. I not mean that you're. I don't think you're slow at all. And I just we just wanted to hear more detailed answers. Yes, that's all. and Jessica, oh. wait, will you come say hi to and oh, yeah. here? Hi. But wait, you might have to speak Hello. closer. I know it's a weird <laughs> feeling, isn't it weird? Yeah, it's so it's deceptively cool. intimate, and then, and then it's out there. <laughs> terrifying what do you mean out there we're just sitting here around we're the just table sitting, that's right <laughs> <laughs> okay so here is the not so rapid fire question series for both of y'all oh if you had to work on a cruise ship what would your job be you have to you have to you you will have to work on a cruise ship a maid Okay, really? you're, you're going to be cleaning the. Yeah, it's making beds and you know See, wiping s- counters. There are so many cabins on a cruise ship. Well, I don't think I'd be the only one. Right, but you. I s- think I'd be part of a staff. <laughs> and but do you understand what I'm going for? I wouldn't have to talk to anybody. See, I knew this. See, uh, we we were gambling about this earlier. Okay. You were right. I I I predicted that you would have said something like cruise director. No. Or. And I'm like, no, she's sort. not going to want to talk to anybody. She's going to want to be like in the really? galley. Like, yeah. I totally no, get right. it. You're the right. galley would be better because at least you can talk to the other people that you work with. And maybe you're just alone. Okay. Maybe that's what I was going for. It's almost being in a padded cell, <laughs> which sometimes I feel like that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> There's a question about okay, a yeah, we're, get, we're getting, up, we're getting, we're <laughs> getting. Actually, you are way ahead of us. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, Jessica, do you have? Oh, um, I'd probably want to be the stand-up comedian on the ship. I love it. So fantastic! I'd be really funny and great. <laughs> of course you would. Of course you would. Would you have a tip jar that you could pass yeah, around? Yeah, that's probably actually my calling. So I'll go do that after this. Apply. <laughs> I hope you do like one of the foreign ones that like so you have lots of like non-English speaking. Oh yeah, audience I'd kill members. With people who didn't speak English. <laughs> <laughs> you should do that. You should try to do that. Oh, thank you. That would be a great experience. <laughs> okay, I'll do that. Yeah. That's my goal. Okay, would you consider yourself a hoarder? If so, what would you hoard? What do you hoard? Well, I mean, I think there's a fine line between never throwing things away. Ah, uh, defensive hoarder. And being a hoarder, <laughs> yeah. I have trouble throwing things away. Mm-hmm. Because to me, everything's a potential document. Mm-hmm. I, I have, have trouble, trouble throwing things away because I don't want to leave my house. So I'm like, oh, I can't run out for paper clips one day. Like, oh, interesting. Like, I can't, like, what if I have to go? I'm going to need this, like, I don't know, this surgical tape, even though I have four other roles. Because what if one day I run out and then I have to go out for surgical tape? Oh, that's I funny. Know. I do that with paper clips. When something <laughs> arrives in a, with a paper clip and I don't need it anymore, I keep. I have a jar and of paper clips. What the hell are you going to do with paper? Clips? Nobody like really like. What do we do with paper clips anymore? I do use paper clips, but oh. <laughs> I, I also can afford a little box of paper clips, and yet it feels you know 
How wasteful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a I'm a hoarder and incredibly wasteful at the same time. But papers, it. stacks of papers everywhere. Yeah, that's it. Oh. Um, Jessica, do you hoard anything? Oh yeah, I think papers, but like sentimental things, like oh. old birthday cards or Christmas. Like mm-hmm. I'm. Yeah. I think like I do that too. I'll, you know, lose a f- family member if I, like, I'll <laughs> never have that memory back if I get rid of the card. Do so. you guys? Uh, this is, I have like a, a drawer, I have a secret hiding place that only one person knows about that contains sort of my naughty things. And I, in case like my, in case I pass away, mm-hmm. I'm like, you have to clear this out before my parents. <laughs> so Chris, so Chris knows where it is. No, I'm not telling Chris. <laughs> he just sees the naughty things sometimes, Sam. Okay. <laughs> but I don't tell him where I hide them. <laughs> Okay. You have to right. tell someone. Well, that's what I'm saying. I one person knows. Okay, you're not gonna tell so, us who it is. No. Okay. Fair no. enough. It's not you, right? <laughs> I I'm know not it's not you. me. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if it were me? <laughs> that would be really funny. We haven't seen each other <laughs> since 2004. <laughs> <laughs> but you would do that for me, right? You would just make sure everything's. I mean, if just... I can get over here, if it's convenient. <laughs> yeah, I would. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Next question. You've been falsely accused of a crime. Oh, God. You've been put in solitary confinement oh, well. because you've been misbehaving, huh? because you're angry. Oh. Your lawyer insisted that they give you one song to play on repeat that you get to choose. What is that song? That's a good question. <laughs> that song would change, though. Well, hmm. you're ju- it's, you it just can't. get the one. You just get one? You just get the one. He fought. He had to fight hard for this. You might get some juices every once in a while. Oh, I guess it would have to be that Cat Stevens song. Oh, you know, if you want to sing out. If you sing oh, out and that's sing a out. great I love that song. song. Yeah. That's a great choice. Yeah. Wow. I think that would help you just be happy in your head. <laughs> get through the day. Yeah. And that's that. You know what? I thought that was going to be a real stumper. But I think you came up with a great answer. Thank you. <laughs> Jessica, do you have an answer? Oh, it's a song on repeat. Mm-hmm. And you're you, in a- you get to choose. Oh sure. Um, I think Philip Glass, The Light. It's like a. Classical- oh Jesus! I know. Jessica, Philip Glass. <laughs> 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 no, <I'm just> <laughs> I love. It would make me feel like I was in no. a movie. Like no, time, that's so. that actually yeah. might kind of keep good. you a little like more a little sane. sane. Yeah. What would you have? I was gonna say Philip Glass too. <laughs> 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 No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's hard. It's a tough one. Because you get sick of everything. You get sick of Over and over. I have everything. a song that I listen to almost every day. What is it? It's really embarrassing. I don't know why I'm about to say this. Come on. Um, it's a song by Ice Cube called Put Your Back Into It. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he goes, Do don't stop, it? get it, get it. I don't know. Do you listen to it in your car? I listen to my car. I listen to it when I'm showering. It's almost every single day. You, go, you don't know the song? No. Oh, okay. All Jessica, right. Well, you really a, don't it's know. It's a motivating no, song. I don't. All right. I'm All right. We're, okay. We're we're gonna work on this though. Okay. Yes. Because please. I, that's probably why you come over and you're all like crazed <laughs> out. You're like, we gotta get going. Podcast. Yeah, that's true. That's, true. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Your beloved great grandmother has passed, and she has bequeathed to you your choice of either a nocturnal pet sloth or her indoor. Flamingo. These are pets that she has loved dearly. Mm -hmm. Which one do you choose and why? And you have to make a choice. All right. The first thing is it's a beloved great grandmother. Yes. Okay. So first I have to pretend that. Yeah. And then I have to pretend that they, she's like, "Mm." I care. It's a care Mm -hmm. about this person. You love this person and you have to take one of these animals, nocturnal pet sloth. Or indoor flamingo. The I don't pet know sloth? <laughs> the flamingo? I don't know. I don't know enough about those animals and their, well, how pick, they poop. You have to pick one. Well, well it depends on how they They're not they potty trained, but your great-grandmother has sort of devised a diaper system for right. both animals. <laughs> <laughs> Customized flamingo. I think diapers. because of I don't know how much how attached a sloth or a flamingo is to people. Uh-huh. 
I don't think they are. And so my great grandmother won't know oh, that. Oh, oh, Lisa. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You got to make a choice. Flamingo or sloth? Sloth. Sloth. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Jessica? Oh, yeah. Sloth. Easy sure. peasy? It's easy, yeah. Okay. Do you right. know a lot about sloths? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love sloths. Oh, great. Oh, yeah. that was just a wild I guess. I feel like a sloth sometimes. So. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> they are pretty cute. Mm-hmm. What? They, they like reach out very slowly for things. But so is I that what you would pick? No, I would go with flamingo because uh, because uh, you know I could build an indoor fountain and you know just keep it there. I've got tons of help. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, no, I, I actually they're both awful choices. Uh, but so <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, now we are on to the multiple choice section okay if you came with a warning label would it say a do not operate heavy machinery b do not have intercourse within four hours of taking this medication or c severe internal injuries can occur if water is forced into body cavities as a result of being near a jet thrust nozzle what am i uh you are a warning label (laughs) i'm a warning label Jessica, it's a tough. One. It's it's a ridiculous. It's tough. It's tough. I don't remember. Um, Sorry, everyone. Can you <laughs> read them again? Read the choices. Okay. Choice. Do not operate heavy machinery. That's a good one. Uh, do not have intercourse within four hours of taking this medication. Mm-hmm. Or C. Severe internal injuries can occur if water is forced into body cavities as a result of being near a jet thrust nozzle. I think the first one. Do not operate heavy. Don't, yeah. Okay. We're not going to assign you to tractor detail or like. I'm not going to have you excavate right. Rome. Right. That would be good. <laughs> Don't That's have okay. me do that. What was that last one? Um, uh, it's bizarre. <laughs> yeah, it's I think that severe. one sounded um, yeah. like... It sounds like if people force water into some of your cavities... It might be trouble. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not made up. That's actually real. We found it on the internet. Oh, from what? <laughs> real? I, yeah. In which sense? What do you mean? I mean, we that's an actual at, We just real looked up like looked warning, 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 warning label. For? I don't know. I don't know. Was, I um, went on Google Images. I didn't, okay. I didn't do much research on this. For <laughs> people? For human beings? Uh, no. Like human no. beings? that uh, shouldn't yes. be near a jet? Right. I think. I don't know. All right. I just thought it sounded funny, but... <laughs> it's a j- a jet. I don't even know what a jet thrust nozzle is. Oh, well, you know, like a handheld shower or um, uh, like a spa jet, oh, water jet. Okay. Is that so what it was, would be? be a, so it was maybe yeah. like a enema or, kind of a medication label. Or is it or a sex toy that I don't, like, once again, I don't know about? I have to go back and search it again. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I want to know how many sex toys you know about. That's not a question. She just that's that's something that you just came up with. No, I'm think I'm trying I to think. <laughs> Do I know of any? Two? Two. I'm not I I'm mean, kinda really. with you on that. I don't I sort of got like I'm behind. I gotta behind. get caught up. You're behind. I'm behind. <laughs> I know. See that's how behind I am. I don't even understand that that was like a <laughs> sexual <laughs> right. thing. People think I'm wittier than I am because I constantly do shit like that. <laughs> anyway. okay. No, but it would be funny if, like, Anna Ferris. No, she's great. Except, God, I just wish she knew more sex toys. <laughs> to me, that's her only flaw. <laughs> that would be so wonderful. If that was my only flaw. But I actually, it does. I think some people might consider that. Okay, oh, kind of a big flaw. All right, um, all right. So, <laughs> last question, um, and this is for you, Lisa. Mm-hmm. You've won many awards, including an Emmy. And two SAG awards. Oh, good for me. <laughs> Which is the better murder weapon and why? Well, the Emmy is really dangerous. I know, but that SAG is heavy. I haven't won one, but I held one once. But, I mean, the Emmy is heavy, but it's got two sharp wings. wings. I know, so you could really stand. It's a somebody. lot of damage. I mean, it you is could a lot really of hurt someone's head with an Emmy. Yeah. Or, well, I feel like if you're going for the head, you use the sag. If you're going for the chest and, like, internal organ damage, you go for the Emmy. Would you go for the chest or would you go for the head? (laughs) Well, I think you'd have to come around with the Emmy and go for the neck. 
Ah. Oh. Right? But it's... I feel Not like that I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> With a slashing motion, a downward slashing motion, <laughs> you know, on my left, their right side. I can see that. Isn't that where the like jugular is or it's on the... Yeah, it's on the... No, their left, my right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, yeah, okay. I wasn't thinking about the, the neck. Right. Least, all right, all right. You <laughs> might win. You might win this one. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> what do I win? <laughs> um, a machete. Wait, hang on. I do. Are have... you really going to get an award right now? I'm getting... You're getting up to go get an award? I'm getting up. I'm getting oh, my gosh. Okay, she's... Is I'm sorry, Jessica. Oh, no. No, but I mean... Yeah, Jessica, what? I'm sorry, Hello. you don't get an award. I don't have any award. No, I can't <laughs> yeah. kill anyone. Yeah. But you're going to go on a cruise ship soon. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And do stand-up <laughs> for foreigners. Yeah. And, uh, oh, she really... Make them far. feel better about back. the disease they caught on the ship. Here you go. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. The 22nd Annual Screen Actors <laughs> Guild Awards... Baseball cap. Baseball cap. <laughs> Hunter Green. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I put it on. I can't, it won't fit. I've got the um, headphones on otherwise. Well, <clears throat> congratulations. Thank you. Well, thank you for being here and thank Aww. you for winning. This episode of Unqualified is brought to you in part by Osea. Wondering what to gift your friends and family this holiday season? Female founded over 25 years ago by a mother and daughter team, Osea's award-winning cleansers, serums, face moisturizers, and body products give you the results you want. Skin that looks and feels amazing. I recently got to try Osea's new body butter, which, like their now famous Andaria Algae Body Oil, transforms dry skin without being greasy, has the same incredible scent, and leaves your skin soft, smooth, and healthy looking. If my experience is any indication, you can count on your partner giving you a lot of compliments. This holiday season, stock up and share your new favorite clean skincare and body care with your friends and family. Unqualified listeners get 10% off your first order with promo code ANA at oseamalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order, and orders over $50 get free shipping. Gifting is always easier if you start early, so head to oseamalibu.com. Use code ANA. This episode of Unqualified is brought to you in part by ZocDoc. Who gets excited about trying a new restaurant that has two out of five stars? When it comes to finding healthcare, don't ratings matter even more? ZocDoc is a free app where you can compare doctors, read reviews from real patients, and even make same-day appointments. When I finally called to reschedule my dentist appointment, I was told that my dentist had been retired for nearly three years. In my defense, parking was a nightmare. Through ZocDoc, I found a new dentist who had great reviews, took my insurance, and whose office was actually within walking distance. I was also able to book an appointment instantly without talking to a receptionist who made me feel guilty about not having my teeth cleaned for three years. My new dentist didn't make me feel guilty either and only suggested I floss a little more often. Whether you need a primary care physician, dentist, dermatologist, psychiatrist, eye doctor, or other specialist, ZocDoc makes healthcare easy. Now is the time to prioritize your health. Go to ZocDoc.com slash unqualified and download the ZocDoc app. Sign up for free and book a top-rated doctor who might be available as soon as today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash unqualified. I don't know. Am I being too impatient? No, Sim, you bored? are. Bored? Are you maybe bored? <laughs> no, I'm not bored okay. at all. Okay. Sim's, <laughs> one of Sim's not so strong suits. Oh, uh, here we go again. Yes. Maybe get that song out of your head. He also, okay. And then you can relax a little. I can't, Lisa, Terrible. I can't. Um, oh, this is better. Are you? Are you on? You're not. On, you're not on speakerphone, are you? Uh, yes, but 
I could remove it really quick. Yeah, okay. she's driving. She can't. That? You're not is allowed. That oh my gosh, so much better, be Nicole. Can you, can you pull over? Or yeah, we want you to be safe. Though. Yeah, but can you pull over and? Yeah, and... yeah. I just, I just pulled over in this uh, neighborhood somewhere in Burbank. <laughs> Okay, yes. Come on, I, I don't know if you grew up here, Nicole, but yeah. isn't it crazy how people drive in the rain here? Yeah. Is she singing? What is All she right. doing? Oh. <laughs> Nicole, how are you? Okay. Yes? Nicole, I'm hi. Doing good. How are you? Doing well. Guess who's here with us? Hi. Well, you won't, you won't be able to guess. But <laughs> well, you, know, you, know, uh, you know who Anna is here. Um, but Lisa Kudrow is also here. Hi. And, and so is Jessica Cabot. No yeah. way. That's awesome. And Jess, Jessica oh, you know, wrote a... Yeah. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Thanks Nicole. for being patient with us and pulling over and everything and for calling in and submitting oh, no a question. Worries. I was looking forward to this, so it's totally cool. I'm so glad. So, Nicole, you fell head over heels in love with a musician in New York. Oh, boy. And any, Oh, exactly. Fans of the podcast <laughs> know how, exactly how Anna feels about dating musicians. Um, and for a while, this guy made you feel really special, and then something happened. Nicole, tell us what happened. Um, yeah, so I, I try to tread cautiously with musicians, but I thought this guy would be the exception. He said that maybe it's best if we stayed as friends, and I really didn't want to lose that, um, that connection that I had with him, so I decided to go ahead with it. Things were progressing really well. Um, I was also flying over to New York City due to my job. But um, as time passed by, he seemed a little bit distant, and we still stayed in touch. I mean, I I built the guy a cigar box guitar for his birthday. Um, wow. That's how I was. Oh, oh, Nicole, I love you. It's, I saw a picture of it. It's it's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, really? I'll, I'll pass the picture You're a good around. friend. <laughs> Nicole. I, I'm a goof. Uh, if I... <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, oh, a, wow. it's an electric cigar box. Oh, my God, it is really it. cool. Can I see? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we're passing, we're passing, we're the, passing photo the photo around. photo around. very it cool. It is amazing. So, okay. So, That's okay. <laughs> what, so, and then what happened after you gave it to him? He was generally in shock. Like, he didn't know what to say. And I think that started to stir a lot of guilt in him. And he felt like shit about it because he realized that my feelings were far more, uh, I would say, stronger than his were. And he, he definitely said, like, you're, you're one of the most important people that I have in my life right now. I really appreciate you, da 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 da, da. Um, But I don't want to see you hurt. I don't want to hurt you. And again, I was like, oh, no, it's so cool. I'm okay with us just being friends, da 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 um, but we, but yeah, um, he was under the impression that I was aces with it. Uh, and then a couple of months or so later, while I was in New York, I actually got appendicitis and I ended up in the hospital oh, no. and nobody, no, none of my friends or relatives were able to, to come and see oh, me for surgery, such a lonely but the only person that okay. showed up was him. That's and nice. I had subdued my feelings a little bit, but while he was there with me, it rekindled all those emotions again. He, <laughs> and the guy was there for me, and he was like in touch with, in touch with my parents, letting them know how things were progressing. Um, but then when I got better, uh, a couple of weeks later, he invited me to one of his shows, and um, I saw him talking to this other girl, and the way that he spoke to her and his eyes lit up, it, it got at me. And so, so <laughs> and then I realized, okay, I can't continue to do the I'm cool with just being friends thing. I don't know if I should just hide in the shadows or, and let this go away or just be upfront with him and tell him, listen, I still have really strong feelings for you. I don't know what to do. So, yeah, that's where I stand right now. Um, not, a, not a fun place to be. Oh, I'm so sorry. What do yeah. you guys think? Because yeah. it sounds like he's not a jerk. Yeah, he sounds like a decent person yeah. that just doesn't have the same feelings you yeah. do. And that's okay. 
isn't it? Hey, yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, you'll find well, someone else. Well, well no, she but stay friends with him. No, she shouldn't, right? Well, not if it's going to make her feel bad okay. every time she sees him with someone else. This is all up to you. Yeah. You know, take care of yourself. So. And I don't think you should confess your your feelings because I, I think that you kind of let it slowly sort of teeter out a little bit because who knows yeah. what could happen. He could, you know, in a year from now, two years from now, whatever, miss you a lot and you guys maybe rekindle things. I don't want to necessarily stoke that hope in you or anything, but I don't think that, um, I think that if you say, if you reiterate your feelings to him, he's he will once again say yeah. something like i can't do this and maybe we can't even be friends or something like that or something that's potentially going to hurt her feelings yeah and i don't want you to have your feelings hurt i don't know jessica what do you think oh okay. um, i mean i've been in not the same situation but similar situations and so i wrote a web series about okay. it, and that's yeah, why. actually, it's really good. <laughs> um, yeah, Nicole, you have to check out this web series. We are going to talk about. But this I mean, I'm bit. trying to pitch my web series to you while you're going through something. But just to say, like, I can relate. I one of my ex boyfriends, I gave him like a annual Disneyland pass for his for like his birthday or something. And that's a great gift. Yeah, but uh-huh. I mean, I can relate to the idea of like really caring about someone and kind of maybe over giving in a sense, like right. giving them more than they can possibly mm-hmm. give back, or that they. And I think for me, like, the lesson in that is just, like, that you're, like, in that you give, like, really awesome gifts, like, you're a really caring person, and, like, all of those, like, good things are a reflection on you and, like, the quality of the kind of person you are, and, like, that's the kind of love that you have Mm -hmm. to give to someone. Yeah. And so it's, like, if the other person can't give it back, then it's, like, the first step, I think, is to kind of funnel that energy that you have to give to others back into yourself, and then I think the right person will come in. I mean, so that's yeah, sort of that's cheesy, right. but... No, it's not cheesy. It's just a true yeah. yeah. thing. Yeah. So, and I mean, it takes <laughs> a lot. You're not alone, Nicole. I mean, I, I've i spent most of my life... Oh. Like, I mean, it, this is a story of so many... Oh, yeah, of Like, course. all of us, men and women. Um, it's For me, it started in third grade, buying ice cream every single day for Ryan. Oh. <laughs> who never really liked me back, <laughs> but I spent my mom, like the ice cream money that my mom gave me every single day on the, we, do you remember like, I don't know, ice milk pops? It wasn't even like ice cream that they sold. It was like frozen <laughs> milk covered in a thin layer of chocolate. Anyway. Oh, Sounds yeah. good. Well, I bought that for him every day. Cause Did I he thought, appreciate the ice milk pops? Oh yeah, but he, he was also like, I'm going out with Lynette. Yeah, that's on you. It's if on you me. If you want to buy him ice that's cream right. every day. Right. Yeah. yeah, and that theme has carried <laughs> with me for for a long time in my life, probably until I was at least, you know, until I was 30, I think. But I Nicole, did you make the phenomenal gift of the cigar box guitar in the hopes that it would make him feel differently about you? I mean, I think anyone gets into yeah. trouble when you're hoping that you can alter someone's thinking or feelings and i think really all you can do is be responsible for your own yeah and it's never wrong i say to love someone like jessica was saying and however you express it in a healthy legal way is good but don't you think too and this is part of a longer conversation that we talk about it on our podcast a little bit is i hate the term sort of playing games but i do think my mom like would always tell me to be selfish in love. And I never understood what that meant. And for a really long time, but what, well, what I think she was really saying was you have to make sure that a man comes to you, the proper man, the right man will come to you. And then you get, you know, like there's definitely, has to be a, a 50, 50, if not 60, 40 or somewhere in that 60, 40 balance, hopefully hovering around 50, 50, um, in in a healthy relationship and and sometimes that means like you know if a guy says he's going to be over in a half an hour and doesn't show up for two hours you're like i'm out of here i'm not waiting for you right and it sucks even though you want to be with him that night Mm -hmm. it sucks it's painful but you sometimes it's like you have to you have to demand the kind of behavior and love that you want i guess 
right? Right. Mm-hmm. I'm so fucking smart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> no, no, but you but you know what I mean, Nicole, and it's the hardest thing to do because yeah. it's like it's almost like working oh, yeah. out. But listen, you know, guys have done the same it is. thing. I mean, guys sometimes will go overboard mm-hmm. and then what happens is it freaks them out. Mm-hmm. They're like, why are you buying me these gifts? Why are you taking me to all these nice right. restaurants? Why? I mean, especially if a guy is sometimes when they're just, you know, the guys have to do the exact same thing sometimes. They don't want to come across as overdoing it because they don't want to scare them off. And it, it works the same exact way. Right. Um, but I, I do genuinely believe that he really likes you. He truly values too. your friendship. And I know it's going to be hard to remove him from your life because you obviously care about him, not just as someone that you dated, but because, you know, he is a genuinely nice person and he cares about you. So, right. so I, I, right. it's, it's, it's going to, to be tough by. to remove him. It's going to be really hard to remove I, I, him. But do life. you have to? Why can't you just... Lisa, be friends you're, with you, him. You're, you, Lisa, you told her what? to get rid of get rid of him. <laughs> if he makes her feel bad, but if she cannot feel bad, I mean, I, I probably should. But okay, there we go. Um, what? I'm old. I can't yeah, hear things cool. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I I think it's also possible though to if you can just adjust your expectations with him, then you can be friends with him. If you're not constantly looking into reading into everything he says, oh, is that a sign that he like? why don't you just decide he's not interested romantically? Yeah. And that's just a fact in your head. You get over that. And then do you really want to be friends with him still? And if you do, then go ahead. And yeah. there is someone else yeah. for you, by the and, way. And I, and I would like try to limit your like texting, like, Every time you feel the urge to text him, um, do it like one out of every six or seven times. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I, I, I will say that I'm pretty disciplined in that department. I don't, I don't like to. If, when I was in your shoes with, with it, stuff like this, I was like, I never had any kind of clarity like you have. It's really impressive. Yeah. Um, but, I agree. I agree. But I, but I wouldn't force his hand by saying like we can't be friends. I would just All right. continue down a steady path and just be like I you know I I know that we're not lovers now, but I want you in my life, and right. I know that it's going to be sort of a different capacity. We live on different coasts. Whatever, but um, I I'm I'm going to disagree with everyone here. In this wow, <laughs> and say nice. what? And say Move that to New York. And say that. And <laughs> to New York. Start a small business I, making I, guitars. I feel like if he continues to be in his in her life as a friend, then that won't open her up to meeting new mm-hmm. men because she'll constantly be thinking about him. Well, that's why I said if you can make the adjustment, right? Yeah. Like a slow in your drift. Head, yeah. Just be friends I with him. Say, but, I'm like a sl- I'm on the slow drift. But yeah, eventually that's I what slow like, drift means. Okay. Yeah. So slow, I, so, but eventually, I think that he should be removed from her life. Well, I on that, mm-hmm. I think there's like kind of a balance between like you. I've had similar situations where I liked someone and it wasn't working out, and we were going to break up, but I wanted them to stay friends and i think there's like a value in taking time out for yourself and kind of like not communicating with that person for a period of time but then you can let that person back in your life when you have the strength and kind of what lisa was saying yeah like about having the adjustment yeah like make the adjustment first and then you can go back to it i have another idea we hire (laughs) a male model who uh (laughs) nicole and this model fly to new york he is a uh, uh-huh. he pretends to be a big time uh band agent like a he, he signs huge <laughs> bands. oh right i forgot the guy was a musician yeah what okay. are we fixing here we're fixing up a <laughs> sweet romantic comedy lisa <laughs> that we're gonna start <laughs> <laughs> Where I play your mother. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> no way. <laughs> we turn the conversation into you and I. <laughs> We're actresses. All we have to do is we just got to get this guy. We'll make him jealous. We'll think that his band and his career is going to be huge. <laughs> and then we say, surprise, but you really oh, loved boy. me all along, didn't you? <laughs> It's a revenge romantic comedy. <laughs> revenge romantic comedy. 
Oh, uh, Nicole, oh. Um, listen, thank yeah. you, Nicole. And, and I think I say date here. Start thank dating you, here is the so practical well. advice. Yeah, you're okay. Uh, you're You've got fine. talents. You can make cigar guitars. I got to tell you, that Do is awesome. We're going to put it on our it. on our um, podcast website so our, our viewers can um, check it out, if you don't mind. Okay. <laughs> if you have any other questions, I'm going to text you Lisa Kudrow's phone number so you can call her and ask uh-huh. her anytime you want. He's not going to do that. <laughs> we'll, I'm sorry. He really won't. We'll start casting okay. the male model soon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Nicole. Nicole. Appreciate it. Oh, gosh, I totally have been there. I have been there. I've been there. Yeah, me too, where you're looking to see, like, oh, maybe this time. Oh, and just like... What did that mean? Oh, he actually offered me some water when I was choking. (laughs) I think he cares more than he even knows. He doesn't even know. (laughs) Or like, yeah, the elaborate... Oh, I I was like a gift. No, I did think that money could buy you love. You did? My actions <laughs> seem to suggest that. <laughs> what with the ice cream bars? Hello? Hello? Steven. Steven? Hi. Hello, friends. Hello. You, you You're not going to even believe yeah. the friends you have. <laughs> Wait until you find out <laughs> which friends you have with us tonight. Um, we have Anna here, Anna Ferris, of course. Hello? Jessica Cabot, who is the uh, creator and writer of the Refinery29 series called Shitty Boyfriends, is also here, a- as is Lisa Kudrow. She's also here with us tonight. Hi. Wow. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and Lisa Hello. And Anna. Oh, my God. Hello. Hello. Um, Thank you for submitting a question, and I can already tell you're a kindred spirit. <laughs> so, Stephen... <laughs> Stephen, your fiance doesn't understand why you feel the need to keep flying back home to see your family. Tell us a little more, and hopefully we can help you. Sure. Um, pretty much that in a nutshell. We moved down here to Atlanta from uh, Connecticut about three years ago and for her job, and it's been great. I absolutely love it down here, the weather, the people. It's, uh, it's a good time, but I try to get home to see my family as much as possible because I have... A uh, brother that just had a baby. Um, she's eight months old. I just FaceTimed her tonight. She's just Aww. about ready to walk and have all these other cousins that have little kids. And I, I just love being the fun uncle, the funkle, as I call myself. And it's fun getting home to see them as much as possible. But a lot of times whenever the discussion comes up of booking flights again, every three to four months is usually what I try to do. She uh, kind of hesitates because of money or is wondering why I'm such a, a mama's boy having to go home and see my mom all the time. And she loves my family. She loves seeing them. She loves hanging out with them when we go home. But she doesn't understand why I want to go home as often as, as most people down here who have moved that maybe go home maybe just twice a year or once a year. Um, I kind of want to do every four, four, four months-ish. So, I, I got it. Tell you, I think you sound amazing. Sounds I know reasonable. you sound fantastic. Yeah. What's the other part of the story? Yeah, I mean, I mean, <laughs> that so, you're not telling us. <laughs> but so, okay, all right. So she gets upset, and you say it's about three to four months. You go home, maybe Not even there. three every three months. So I went home in Christmas, and I was going to go home again in May um, for my bachelor weekend because we're getting married in August, and. I kind of planned a last minute flight here in a couple of weeks in March, kind of impromptu and dropped about 300 bucks on a flight. And we're trying to save for a, for a honeymoon and for a wedding. And she said, you really have to go home again right. three months. If you just went home and saw them, like, can't you stretch it out a little more to May? And I'm like, no, I want to, I want to see everybody. And she said, okay, all right. Fine. So does she normally, There's come- always a- sorry, didn't mean to cut you off. Stephen, go on. Oh, go ahead. Well, th- does she, she, so she normally doesn't go with you on these trips. She will go with me most of the time. There'll be maybe one or two trips out of the four or five that we take in a year where I'll go by myself just because she has work and she, her family's much smaller than mine and they, they don't hang out as much as my family does. So she's okay with going five or six months, not going home. And so like this trip coming up in March will be just me and, uh, which is fine because it's only one flight instead of two. But, uh, if the two of us go and, you know, she, comes with us it's it costs obviously double the money so right. i think it's most it's mostly financial i think but also 
the constant connection I have with my mom and dad and my, you know, I call my mom mm-hmm. probably three, four times a week and mm-hmm. she can go, she can go weeks without talking to her mom. But when they do talk, it's, everything is normal, just like my, me and my mom. So it's, it's not that they don't like each other or anything. It's just the connection isn't as close. Well, okay, I've got lots and lots and lots of thoughts here. Sim and I both come from really close families, and it has been threatening to some of our romantic partners in the past. And the sad truth is is that the families have always won. Mm-hmm. Because that's that's just sort of the sad yeah. truth. of. I mean, not sad. It's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful because... But when your partner in life ask you to make that kind of choice that's not fair it's not fundamentally fair now having said that you don't necessarily have to say that to your fiance (laughs) but you could say here's my pitch what you could say is baby i love my family so much i love you so much right now before we get married before we have babies um i i want to i want to see them a little bit and I miss them and I love you so much and I can't wait to start a family with you or whatever. I don't know if that's your journey, but I'm just, pitching, I'm just pitching ideas here. Um, no, no, it's pretty accurate. Pretty accurate. But, uh, but until then, until, because once, you know, we start having kids, our lives will be completely different. But right now I, 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 I really feel a strong need to be a part of, you know, my, my, uh, niece and nephews or cousins of lives and it's really really important to me and i hope that one of the reasons you're attracted to me is because i love being around kids and i love being a part of their lives and you know i'm i'm gonna do my best to be a great dad and a great husband and um and i hope you understand that this is this is really important to me now since you, since you can relate since you guys can relate to me in that sense now so flash forward five to seven years Will I be doing the same thing in five to seven years or will I have settled in more down here a decade later and will the flights and going home kind of reduce itself it will, over it, time? Say. It'll reduce itself, but here's what will happen, especially if you guys have kids. They'll come down more to see you, especially like your parents. And that will be also a different kind of journey for your wife because – especially for women, the relationships with their husband's parents are really tricky because um, there's sort of an unconscious sort of power struggle um, with with that whole thing. And and, um, so it'll it'll shift. But I do think I, I do think that it is not it's 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 tricky territory that she's entering into. And maybe you can say, you know, it's all about timing. You can say, honey, listen, I'm, I know that money is a concern. We've got a lot of expenses coming up and everything, but I don't know if money is the full issue here. And I want to, I would just want to lay everything out on the table. And I just want to tell you that I, I want, I want the world. I want you. I want kids. I want right. my family. I want I want it all and um and I want to be able to see them for t- four to five times a year maybe more. Lisa, am I a mama's boy? <laughs> I know I've been talking too much. No, no, you've been saying good things. You know, I mean, I don't have anywhere near the same issues because my has my in laws live in another country. My parents live two miles away. My whole family does and. So I don't, we don't, I don't, we don't have to ever had to You're spend not, money on going, but. You um, sound wonderful. You're not a mama's boy. No, my husband calls his mother every day to say okay, hello. Yeah. So then we're on the same page. So you experience the same thing she's experiencing here then. Cause I do that. I talked to her today. I helped her book a flight down here today, ironically. So. Yeah. No, I mean, I think it should be a wonderful thing that you're close with your family. Cause it's a. You know, that's a good sign, Sim usually. But just got weaned from his mother's breast, what, not what, three <laughs> years ago? I'm, I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> but, is, but how long have you and your fiancé been together? Uh, about six and a half, seven years, and we're getting married in August. Oh, so she knows you're, she's from Connecticut, too? Yeah, we moved here for her job. Um, we were dating and through college, and then after 
college um, working a bit, and then we moved here about three years ago for her job. And I proposed last August getting married this coming August. So when you go see your family, she could see her family too because they're there also? Yes, and that's what we usually do. We'll we'll split. If we're there for four days, we'll do usually two and a half days with my family, a day and a half with her family. Right. Um, but then I have a lot of friends I'm still connected with. She made a lot of new friends down here, and I'm connected more with a lot of my friends back home. Oh, why so is that? So when I go by my... Uh, I don't know. I think it's because she, she kind of got into new things when she finished college, and when she came down here, she just connected with a lot of the new people here where with sports and with a lot of my buddies from back back home, we stayed connected through sports, you know, um, fantasy football leagues and things like that. So when I go home without her, I'll try to visit them the one time a year that she doesn't come with me. I'll go and see them. Like I'm meeting with a bunch of people this time because she's not with me. I'll, I'll, I'll catch, go to the, the bar with them one day or then go to, you know, something else another day with these other guys because I don't see them the other times we come home because we split it with family uh, basically the whole trip. Well, so Chris Chris and I, um, we grew up in the same area. We didn't know each other, but we both moved to L.A. roughly around the same time, but we didn't meet till 2007. And when I first met him, he was going home all the time. And I had severed besides my closeness with my family, a lot of ties there. I didn't have any friends, but he was constantly, like like every, maybe even more than, I felt like every three weeks, he was going back and visiting all his old buddies. He didn't have that many friends here in L.A. He was very much tied to Seattle and that area. And, um, and because I didn't have that many friends, I, I just didn't feel the same thing, and it felt like, what, what do you, you know, why, why do you, you know, I, 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 but I, we were too, I would, we were too sort of early on in our dating to, for me to, um, I, I was sort of good about like not, uh, revealing my insecurities. At least I thought I was, I don't know, <laughs> well, that's, but well, that's, why are was, you going away? Why are you here with wondering. me? <laughs> but, but he's, it's different now and we, you know, we have a kid and, you know, it's it's. I, so I do think when you ask your question about five, ten years from now, it's it will totally change. Yeah, that's a good point. But I'm also wondering, are you making friends in Atlanta? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a lot of well, a lot of our friends are are mutual friends because she works with a lot of females at her job. She works for uh, Carter's. They make the baby clothes. I'm sure, Anna, you've oh, I love a lot of those. Carter's. <laughs> yeah, so. Carter's. Yeah, and- <laughs> our new sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> What's that brand again? <laughs> Carter's. Baby Carter's. <laughs> from Atlanta. <laughs> what a perfect fit. <laughs> <laughs> if you have any shoes or socks or hats, any of the accessories, that's what her job is, is to kind of buy those and put them out into the store. So um, she has a lot of friends that she works with there and their husbands and boyfriends or fiancés I've met through her friends and coworkers. And thankfully a lot of, of them, almost all of them have been really fun. So, you know, it could have been awkward where you meet, you know, your, your fiance's coworkers husband and he's a total douche, but he ends up being really nice. So that's helpful. Well, listen, it sounds to me like you guys, you, you sound incredibly level-headed. I don't want you to feel like you have to give up your home. I think when the timing is right, kind of explain to her, listen, things are going to change. But right now, I, I want I want to be close to this while I can because I know that we're going to have a family and, and things are going to be different in the future. So give me a pass on this. I will also say one final thought, though, too, um, is that planning a wedding – that time is so stressful, and oh, it brings up all kinds of shit. It, it's like it's shit that you didn't even know, like what was going on, and brings out weirdness and and everybody involved. So don't just don't forget about that. That it just happens to be that the period between engagement and wedding is a really rough one that nobody that that's it's easy to dismiss. Right. So well, Anna, you know what. One of the the one thing that we haven't done yet, we've got everything done: flowers, food, venue. The one thing we haven't signed yet. No way. Recipient. No way. Is what? 
<laughs> oh my god, I'm oh, so efficient. sorry. Mike, our technical producer, just had to <laughs> lower the volume because I freaked out so much. Um, well, so I've been telling everyone, Lisa, that um, so I'm a I'm a you're minister. ordained. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I, I just yeah. knew that was what, as soon as he I said the one so thing funny. we haven't done. I knew that was happening. <laughs> Smell it a mile um, away. Uh, yeah, and, you know, uh, in the Atlanta is the new Los asked. Angeles, so if you're a guy here for we, filming or anything, all right. August 20th. Okay, all right, all right. Well, listen, you know how unqualified I am, um, <laughs> well, but you kn- do know that I love attention. So if there's any way I can make your wedding all about me, I would just love to. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, oh, my God. I'm, t- I'm getting beat red right now. You should see my She's face. She's really excited, Stephen. Um, <laughs> that is completely <laughs> made her nut. <laughs> all right. Well, listen. Kim, will you please be in touch? Um, and, uh, and listen, don't, don't, um, you know, don't give up. Uh, you, can, you can have it all. You can have your wonderful family and a wonderful fiancé and wife and kids. Thank you. And I love the podcast. Uh, I've only been listening for a week. I came over when Adam Carolla was there. I'm a Carolla fan. And I listened to one, the one episode and I said, this is really good. And oh, good. And downloaded another one. And I started, I subscribed and I've listened to all of them in a week. Oh, and wow. now I'm on the show. So oh, my God. Thank you so much, Stephen. That's been down. And you asked me to officiate your wedding without your fiance's permission. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best oh, night of my I life. Already mentioned it, that I, was, I already mentioned that I was going to ask this question. And she's like, hell yeah, Anna can officiate. No way. <laughs> oh, my God. I love her. Oh, I'm totally on her side. Do not see your family ever again. It's too expensive. <laughs> exactly. There is no issue. He made up the whole, oh, I, I love my family too much. And um, it's like maybe the money. Maybe. <laughs> all right. Well, listen, uh, you got me all giddy. Um, let's please be in touch. Steven, thank you so Steven, much. Steven, thanks a lot. And congratulations on Thank everything. you, guys. Love you. Love Appreciate you, too. It. Bye. Bye. Wow. I can't. This, I was like, this is genuine excitement. I felt like he proposed to me. <laughs> he did. He proposed that you marry him and his fiance. Can you I, imagine? I'd be the I worst. don't think they really have a problem. If I ever get married, will you also uh, do mine? Are you kidding? Yeah, please. Well, well, let's see how she does with Stephen. Okay, sure. Yeah. So the reason I got I ordained just... was because I was just hoping that someone would ask. Like, really? Yeah. Like, that maybe be... if I actually, like, signed up, like... Somebody might ask because you know normally the the normal path is like, hey, would you marry us? Would you mind getting ordained or whatever? But I was proactive. Um, <laughs> you and, got ordained before anyone asked you. Two thousand seven. Oh, you've been and waiting a long time. No, exactly. Wow, really? tonight, and I, now I got two yeah. two invites. That's amazing, Lisa. I'm already you, married. Do, but what about like a renewal ceremony? A renewal ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> we barely do Valentine's Day or our anniversary. But sure. But you saw the magic tonight. I did. <laughs> much joy you're just very nice. I love that yeah. you're like project. No, you're so sweet with everyone who calls and patient and oh, nice. Oh, just wait. I go upstairs and I start stabbing the wall. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going we're gonna to segue now from this love and marriage and 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 to shitty boyfriends oh. it's a pretty good segue um <laughs> there's a new show that's out on a website called refinery 29 that you created mm-hmm. and it's Lisa so fucking is funny executive producing mm-hmm. and it's called shitty boyfriends tell us what it's about oh well thanks for watching yeah oh my we, god we it's so fucking funny yeah, it it's really really funny and, oh good yeah anyway we, yeah sorry jessica will you tell us what it's about Oh, no, it's, um, I, I interned for Lisa a long time. We both went to Vassar, which is how I <laughs> got connected to her. A hundred years apart. No, no. <laughs> um, and I was really fortunate to work for her. Um, and Aww. I, it was like a really great experience. And then after that, I dated a lot of shitty guys, I guess. <laughs> or I don't, I, I don't know. I, I had experiences that were less than positive. And well, because you're like a normal young woman in your twenties, yeah. right? And I <laughs> dealing really, with normal young men in their twenties. I really, really wanted a boyfriend, also. So I was a little tried bit, to make a bad thing work. Yeah, I was exactly. a little bit trying to um, do that. So, but things would happen, and I um, we worked with a guy named Kyle. He's at Lisa's office, yeah. and I stayed in touch with him. And he had read one of my blog posts about some Valentine's Days that I had experienced. 
And he's like, you should turn this into something and ride the Lena Dunham wave was his yeah. words. <laughs> so so um, one day I just kind of wrote like a little packet of like dates that I had experienced and Lisa read it and I think she seemed to enjoy it enough to pitch it to this. Well, you're incredibly talented. You're really funny. Mm-hmm. Oh, and thanks. What's <laughs> also amazing about the show is how vulnerable you are and... And it really is kind of like everyone's story. And, yeah. And um, I just, I, 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 we've all been there. All right. Well, listen, Sim is giving me um, <laughs> the, it's the, it's the super complicated. It's, it's hard to interpret. I know. I didn't know what was happening. He puts, his, like in, he puts his index <laughs> finger into the air and he swirls it around. And what that is our, that's our secret code for <laughs> for, secret. for what I wonder. Well, wrap, wrapping it up, which you would think you would do more of sort of like I'm going to wrap up a present motion <laughs> and tie a bow. I mean, I thought, oh, that's that sign I've seen on shows a lot of times, meaning wrap it up. But I don't know what it means. That was, here. I mean, that was just really awkward, wasn't it? It wasn't very graceful. Sim was just having a small spasm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's better than him saying, wrap it up. <laughs> That's true. But she always calls me out on it, too. Yeah, fuck you, Sim. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, there I know. It, it wouldn't, you know, but I say it with love. It. Now you're happy. Yeah. Fuck you, Sim. Yeah, and there it is again. Was that a little more? That was, I'm uh, trying to say I like loving. That I like the delivery on that one. Sim, fuck you. That was the best one yet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what do you think? Well, it was really alluring. <laughs> Lisa, Jessica, thank you so much. Thank, oh, you. thank you. And yeah. uh everyone out there, please check out uh Jessica Cabot's new incredible show called Shitty Boyfriends. Yeah, it's good. On Refinery twenty one, ninety one? Twenty nine. Twenty nine. Refinery twenty nine. Wow. And, um, whoa. And, I, you know what? Can we just blame Stephen for asking me to officiate his wedding. It's very exciting. <laughs> yeah. I know you still haven't like recovered. Like, oh. <laughs> what am I going to do? I just, and I'm I, in Atlanta a lot. I would say don't get his hopes up by continuing to talk about it. I, what if it's like well, the it best like she wants to do of it. my life? I mean, right. it sounds okay. like she wants well, to do it. You have mine too to do. Oh. To find that. Person. All right, but his is imminent. Yeah. I know that's, that's true. true. You've got <laughs> time. Yeah. It's not till August you can come up with you know the have them write their vows first of all, no. and then you have nothing. No, I'm going to write their vows. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, do you not know me at all? <laughs> Shitty well, boyfriends, refinery, refinery twenty nine. Please subscribe to us on iTunes and follow us on Twitter at unqualified and on facebook what else claire and also wait one last thing and, lisa um is um is uh starting up um who do you think you are again oh that's right yeah yeah in march march so, in march and you're the producer the, you're the executive producer of i that produce show that well. i produce shitty boyfriends wow you produce lots i do it turns out i feel like <laughs> well, you, i want you to produce me all right <laughs> I don't know I'd what be that happy means. To. I just had You're a weird already... visual of like me coming <laughs> out of your vagina. <laughs> too. <laughs> That's what I saw too. I said, all right, wait. I said, all right. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs> oh, my God.